Hello again. We'd like to begin our formal pro program here in a second, but before we do, let's first give a big round of applause to the skating coordinator, Michelle Hensley, and her staff at Sodexo for tonight's meal. At this time, I'd like to recognize several individuals associated with the Pitt State program who are in attendance. We continue to be blessed with tremendous administrative leadership at Pittsburgh State University. This certainly is an exciting time on campus. The man who provides the leadership and vision for our university, PSU's ninth president, Dr. Steve Scott, is here this evening along with his son, Phil. When we look at the great things taking place on campus, it's no coincidence to see three men, Dr. Scott, head football coach Tim Beck, and athletic director Jim Johnson, all in year two of their positions at the university. It's a pleasure to welcome the leader of our unit in intercollegiate athletics, Jim Johnson, along with his wife Cindy and son Riley tonight. The other guests in attendance from the PSU administration, Provost Dr. Lynette Olson, Vice President Brad Hodson and his wife Sue, Vice President John Patterson and his wife Janet, Associate Vice President Steve Irwin, also from the President's Office, Joanne Cleland and her husband Ken, Faculty Athletic Rep Catherine Huey and her daughter Emma. We'll give a round of applause for each of those. We'd like to welcome members of the Gorilla Fund Advisory Board tonight, the PSU Ambassadors Club, as well as members of our Kansas City Gorilla Club. In their own ways, each of these groups play key roles to the success of our athletic department. We also have several members of the PSU Athletics Hall of Fame in attendance tonight, and we'd like to recognize those men and women now. Thanks to all of you. Senator Bob Marshall is in attendance tonight. We'd like to welcome Senator Marshall. I know Coach Beck will introduce his staff later, but I'd like to recognize several others from PSU Athletics who are in attendance tonight. Senior Associate Athletic Director and Head Track and Cross Country Coach Russ Jewett. Associate Athletic Director Natalie Cullen is here along with her husband Lance, who's a member of Coach Beck's staff. <laughs> Associate Athletic Director and Head Athletic Trainer Phil Carr and his wife Sonia are here tonight. <laughs> along, along with student trainers Devin Leinenbrink, Candace Ulbrick, and Tish Trout. <laughs> Finance Manager Kim Little is here this evening. <laughs> Director of Athletics Operations, Brad Wells, is here, along with his hardworking students, Taylor Brown, Anthony Crispino, Tyler Dawson, Aaron Flood, and Tim Pierce. They do a tremendous job behind the scenes. I'd like to acknowledge each of them. Our strength and conditioning coach, John Johnson, is here this evening. Also on staff, assistant track coach, Brian Mantooth, and his wife, Megan. Assistant Volleyball Coach Jenny Mueller and Head Softball Coach Elizabeth Economon are here tonight. From the Office of Athletic Marketing and Communications, our Director of Marketing and Community Engagement, Emily Moses. Athletics Photographer Carla Waymeyer, as well as several of the top-notch students and graduate students were blessed to have uh, work with us. Nick Baldetti is here along with his young son, Blaine. Jake Faber, Bobby Frisbee, Lauren Matthews, and Brett Scott. My wife, April, and son, Blake, are here as well, so I'd like to throw them in with that group and uh, give them all a round of applause. And finally, a special welcome and thank you uh, to the lady who's in charge of orchestrating this event, our administrative assistant in athletics, Lacey Anderson, as well as her student assistants, Erica Greer and Jennifer Little, who helped make all the small and large details of this event come together tonight, so thanks to all of them. In a very short period of time, Jim Johnson has effected significant positive change in the Department of Intercollegiate Athletics. 
Less than two years into his tenure, already PSU has benefited from his collaborative leadership style. His vision for Pitt State Athletics to give all of our 13 inter intercollegiate sports programs the resources and infrastructure to compete and succeed in the MIAA and on the national stage in NCAA Division II. It's a great time to be associated with Grill Athletics, and the future certainly is bright as the department continues to push forward. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage Mr. Jim Johnson. Anytime we have one of these events, the first thing that <clears throat> I always want to do is thank Dan. He never thanks himself when he's up here. He thanks everybody else, but never himself. And he's really, when he talks about behind the scenes and the scripts and the videos and all the many things that go into planning, not just this event, but Hall of Fame and many others throughout the year, uh, certainly has his fingerprints on it. Not to mention what he does on a daily basis in a, uh, in a world of uh, technology and, and media that where the expectations are off the charts and providing real-time information. And when he talks about what a great student staff he has, and his staff with Emily and, and with Heidi, they just do an outstanding job. So let's please give them a round of applause, Dan. <laughs> Dan recognized Lacey, and, and I want to add to his comments that <clears throat> when we have these events and you don't think it can get any better, then she goes and sets the bar just a little bit higher. And I think you've, uh, think you've outdone yourself tonight, Lacey. I'm not sure where you're sitting, but thank you very much, you and Brad and all of your staff. This is an outstanding event. Thank you. I do want to thank just a couple of people. I know I don't want to, I don't want to be lengthy in these because there's so many people that were a part of the, the team this season uh, from a lot of different angles. Um, and, and when you start thinking those, you inevitably will miss somebody. But there are a few people here tonight that I do want to thank and I do want you to recognize. I'm kind of do this, do this by groups a little bit. Um, I'm going to ask these people to stand and I'm going to embarrass them just a little bit. Uh, Tom Amershack, I know you're here. Would you stand, please? Wanda Endicott, Wanda's back in the back. And Mike McCracken, I'm going to put those three in a group. And, and what I want to say about Mike, where are you? There you are. When you put on the type of events, you have eight home football games, which is a great thing to have. And you put those events on uh, as an athletic director and as an administrative staff, you don't worry much about, you don't worry any about the coaching. You don't need to worry about the coaching and you don't. You don't worry about the players, the trainers, the cheerleaders and all those, um, all those aspects of the game because we have great people doing those jobs. The thing that keeps you up at night is, is the facility going to be ready? Is everything going to be good when, it, when folks show up? And how's things going to go with security? These three people right here, you don't lay awake at night worrying about that. They do a great job. Thank you, the three of you, very much. <laughs> I can't introduce uh, Phil. Phil, I'd like for you to stand back up. Phil Carr, please. And Mike Savuda and Todd Bryans are there with Phil. Um, we did not have a year without injuries. We had a few. We made it through that, obviously, and we made it through, through that because of the great work of these three guys and, and Phil's students. Um, to do the job of an athletic trainer and team physician and keep 100 guys healthy and on the field as much as possible is a harder job than any of us have. Thank the three of you very, very much for the job you did. Really, my job tonight is to thank all of you, to thank the fans. We had a phenomenal year, not just the players, not just on the field, but the fan support was nothing that it's really, there's really, really are not words to explain the support we have here and how that was exhibited this season in 2011. Starting at St. Joe, Missouri at Missouri Western back in August, and when we all of a sudden thought this year could be special, a lot of you were there for that. We had five regular season home games, and we had, uh, we had sellouts in almost all of those. And for the year, we were 15% above capacity for five home games. That's pretty amazing when you really think about that number. And then came the playoffs. And we obviously, we earned our way, played our way into that, and earned a chance to play at home <clears throat> the first couple of weeks. And you came out in just absolutely awful weather twice and supported the gorillas and supported all of us by showing up. And you were a big reason. The Ichabods and the Bearcats went home with losses. 
wasn't just the players on the field, but it was who was in the stands as well. For, for two days that it probably wasn't a lot of fun to be a fan, and we, and we understand that. And then came time to select a side for the semifinals. The football committee does that on Saturday night after the quarterfinals. That's not by seed anymore. They look at a lot of different factors, <clears throat> and they certainly look at attendance history. They look at what they know the environment's going to be. They look at what they know is going to be a special place for a television game, for ESPN. They take all that into consideration. The reason we played Delta State here on December 10th was because of the people sitting in this room. No question about it. That's why we played here on December 10th was because the NCAA and the eight guys on the football committee knew if they came here, it would be an unbelievable environment to play in and to be on television. And we are thankful for you for that. That was much better than going to Delta State. I can tell you, I think Coach Beck and all of us would agree, it was a lot more fun to play here than to go to Mississippi. And the outcome was, was a good one. But that would not have happened without the fan support that we have and the fact that the nation is aware of that. I also want to, uh, I want to add to that the 4,500 almost people that went to Florence. On Friday night in the Marriott and in the stands at the Gorilla, Gorilla Village, the tailgate that morning, and it was early, and at, in the game and in the stands, there, there was a reason we were the home team but sat on the visitor's side. And the, and the reason for that is TV cameras. They wanted the biggest crowd on the TV cameras that were on the other side. Once again, they knew who that was going to be, and we didn't disappoint them. I had two or three people from the National Championship Committee tell me that in 26 years, that was by far the best crowd, the best following any team had had in Florence for a championship game. And you, we thank you for that, and you're to be commended for that. I want to, I want to thank, thirdly, I want to thank our players. And I know we're going to hear a lot about all the great accomplishments on the field. You're going to hear from Natalie in a minute about the great accomplishments in the classroom. <clears throat> but I want, to, I want to personally thank you for, on behalf of all of us for the memories you created. Over a 16-week period, you created a lifetime of memories for everybody in this room, for kids from four or five years old that traveled with us to Alabama and got to go on the plane and on the bus, watch that game, Throughout the year, whether it was homecoming, camouflage jerseys against Southern, whatever it was, you created a memory for somebody, for a lot of people. And when people thank you for winning the national championship, thank you for your performance on the field, and for all the things that you do in the community, just remember that the reason they're thanking you is because you created a memory for them and for a lot of other people. Not only did we do it playing well on the field, not only did we do it in the classroom and have one of the best semesters academically we've ever had here in football, but we did it with class. And a lot of times we use that word, it's a little bit of a cliche to say we played with class and, and we conducted ourselves with class. A lot of people try to say they do that. We've seen, we've seen teams, we've had opponents who we know haven't done that. We know we do. When I was sitting in my office yesterday, preparing these remarks and I was trying to come up with a great way to explain the class that our coaching staff, that our players, that our entire university and community, the type of class we exhibit whether we're at home or on the road and how to do that without it sounding just like another, class, another speech about having class. And I'm not making this up. I'm sitting there, I'm thinking about this. How am I gonna explain this? And an email pops up in my inbox. And I look over and I, it's from Danny Killen from Florence, Alabama. And I open that up and why it, it was almost a month since we've, or is a month, since we've seen him. This was the first time I talked to him a couple of times. This is the first email I'd gotten from him. And it popped up yesterday, the day before we came to, to celebrate tonight. I'm going to read that to you. It's addressed as an open letter to Pittsburgh State University football team, coaching staff, and supporters. For the past 26 years, I've had the honor and privilege of serving on the Shoals National Championship Committee 
and as a team host for players in the Division II National Championship game. Over the years, some teams naturally bring a special kind of class to the game and how they conduct themselves on and off the field. The 2011 Gorilla team and fans are at the front of the line on my list of first class teams and communities. The first class attitude can only be a reflection of their parents, the coaching staff, the Gorilla Nation, their university, and Pittsburgh, Kansas. As Gorilla team host, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the 2011 team for being national champions and representing your university and Gorilla Nation with class, all in caps. Thanks y'all, and I can't say y'all as good as Danny. <laughs> Thanks y'all for making me a Gorilla, and I'll see you next year at the championship game. That pretty well sums it up, doesn't it? My last job is to introduce the president, the ninth president, as Dan said, of Pittsburgh State, the fourth president with a national championship football ring, Dr. Steve Scott. All right, what a day. You know, Jim, you're a great advocate for athletics. You had convinced me we need to renovate the weed. But as I sit in this arena, it looks beautiful. <laughs> Do you really think we need to renovate the weed? He does. He's not going to back off of that. I haven't asked him yet where we're going to store these trophies. Because my concern is the expansion of the weed has just gotten larger. But it's an exciting thing to do, to think about where to place those. But it has been a great day for Pittsburgh State University and the city of Pittsburgh and really this entire region and now what we call Gorilla Nation. People all over the country are celebrating the gorillas now. It's just an amazing thing, an amazing time, and really an amazing moment in the history of Pittsburgh State University. It's an amazing moment for me because I got to ride on a fire truck today. <laughs> that was kind of fun. I kind of enjoyed that. So thanks, John Ketterman. I think John's in the audience. I want to address my remarks, and I'll be, I'll be brief. I know you've, we've got some important things to do, and we want to focus our attention on the players, and that's where I'll make my comments first. And then at the end of my comments, I'll introduce the person you really came to, to see and to hear from tonight. But to the student athletes, to the players, uh, congratulations. And most importantly, thank you. What a great journey you have provided for us. And I'm telling you what, I am a fan. I'm a football fan. I'm a fan of these coaches, and especially I'm a fan of the student athletes that play for Pittsburgh State University, regardless of what the venue is or what the costume or the, or the jerseys that they wear. I am a fan, and I'm a fan of yours. I hope that comes through tonight. Congratulations on winning the 2011 National Championship. What a, what a sound that is. You know, every, every conversation I had in Topeka last week, every conversation I had in Indianapolis the week before, and every conversation I have next week in Topeka will begin with, how about those gorillas? That's a nice way to start the conversation. To the coaches, congratulations to you. The coaching staff, I know you invest hours and hours of time. You represented us so well. You were professional. You, you coached with grit and determination. And our student athletes really carried that forward on the field. And I appreciate the work that you did. I also want to thank the spouses. Uh, Gina and I have talked before. I said one day to Gina, I said, you know, you and I have a similar investment in this. Neither one of us get to call any plays, but the outcome has a lot to do with how our lives go. So Gina and to the rest of the coaching families, uh, congratulations to you. I know you've invested a tremendous amount in all of the victories and all the success of this year. I also want to say thanks to Jim Johnson and his staff. They did a tremendous job. To host eight home games is not an easy task. You know, Jim has brought a new level of professionalism to what we do in athletics. We were good before, there's no doubt, but we're even better now. I'm confident that our athletics program, the way we plan, the way we operate, the way we do game administration, will quickly become the envy of the nation. Very confident of that. I want to thank also the Pittsburgh State staff and family who's contributed so much to make this work. And Mike and Wanda and Tom, 
we're thanking you, but we want you to go back and thank the staff that you, that you work with because they got it done night after night, day after day for this campus and for these student athletes and these coaches. And we're extremely proud of what, of what you guys did. I also want to thank the, the university marketing and communications folks, the students who broadcast the games. They do a tremendous job. The band, I talked to Doug Witten today, said he can't remember a better year that he's ever had with the band. Can't imagine why he would say that. The dance squad, the yell leaders, the police, ROTC kids, they did a lot of push-ups. We like that. What a great year it's been, what a great team we put on the field, but what a great team we had that really supported and made those games work as well. So thanks to all of those individuals. It's time for me now to bring Coach back to the podium, but I want to tell you a story first. And it's a good story. And, and Coach Beck doesn't know I'm going to tell this story. But back in 2009, I hadn't been president very long in the fall of 2009, and we began to think about transition from a very, very successful program led by Chuck Royals to a new era of guerrilla football. And I really began to think about how would that transition occur, and who is the right person to lead the guerrillas. Struggled with a little bit in terms of a process, not really the outcome, never struggled with the outcome. And at some point decided what I thought was the best thing to do was to bring a group of passionate girl supporters together and put in front of them the person who I thought should lead the girls. So I invited a group of people to meet me in the, the alumni center one evening. And I introduced myself, because I hadn't met some of them and spent much time with some of them. And I talked to them about the fact that guerrilla football was extremely important, important to this community and to this university. And we needed to move forward, and we needed to move forward in a very positive way. And I thought the person to do that was Coach Tim Beck. But I wanted their opinions. I wanted their thoughts. So we opened the doors, and Coach Beck walked in, and he addressed the group. And he talked to us about what it takes to build a championship team. It was impressive. It was like a tutorial in football. He talked about the need to recruit speed. He said that speed creates turnovers. I didn't know that, but I get that now. He said defense wins championships. And you win with character and discipline. Clearly, he knew what he was talking about. But you know, it wasn't the content of what he said that made a difference. It was the way that he said it. He said it with a sense of calmness, conviction, his own discipline, and great confidence. He knew what he needed to do. He knew what we needed to do. And he was ready to get it done. At the end of that meeting, it was very clear who the next leader of the guerrilla football team would be, and that was Tim Beck. That was a great direction for this campus, there is no doubt. And I don't mean that just for this year, but I mean that for the years to come. So at this time, ladies and gentlemen, would you help me welcome to the podium the coach of the 2011 Division II National Championship football team, and the man who truly is our Coach of the Year, Coach Tim Beck. Dr. Scott doesn't know about that meeting is the fact that uh, somebody, they kind of wanted to be a surprise to all these boosters on who this guy was, and uh, so I don't remember who did. Somebody hid me in a broom closet, and uh, I wasn't really nervous at all before the meeting until John Patterson came in and gave me a pep talk and uh, told me I could do it, and so I'll never forget that, and I appreciate it, but... Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I really do appreciate that. You know, I was, was, was fortunate enough in our coaching staff, we were fortunate enough to, to win the Liberty Mutual Coach of the Year Award. And uh, about a week ago, I was at my uh, son Drew's basketball game, and uh, one of his good friends 
which just also happens to be Zach Dickey's cousin. Uh, he comes right up to me between games and, and grabs me and says, you know, the only reason you won that trophy is because our team did good. <clears throat> and I grabbed a hold of, of, of him and said, is that what you think? He goes, no, I'm just kidding. But you know what? He's exactly right. He's exactly right. And I tell you, uh, you know, we, uh, we talk about our, our awards that we get as individual players and coaches and everything is because of our football team. And I felt like this year was we had the ultimate team. And very appreciative of that. Everybody's thanked so many people. I, I, I uh, had all these people I was going to thank, but now I'm not sure I need to thank anybody. Everybody's been thanked so many times, but I am going to thank some people. And, and uh, first, I'd like to thank my wife, Gina, and my family. Sammy's here, and Derek, and Drew, and Sydney couldn't be here because she's in a basketball tournament. But uh, I want to thank my family for, for being patient and giving me the opportunity to be able to, to follow my dream. I would like to thank Dr. Scott for, for the decision he made with me and our coaching staff and giving us that opportunity. I'm very appreciative of that because I know it was a tough decision. I know ultimately you had to make that decision. And so I'm very appreciative of that. I'd like to thank Jim Johnson. Uh, Jim is, is a, he's a football coach's dream as an athletic director because the only thing he really wants from me, the only thing he comes down and says all the time is, do you need anything? Or is there anything you need before I see before the game? He comes up and says, do you need anything? And I'm very appreciative of, of him joining our team. Very appreciative. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I got to thank Dan Wilkes. Uh, I know he's got about 15 titles now, but I still believe he's the best sports information director in America. And uh, as you guys look at the media guide, it's, it's phenomenal. And it's uh, very, does, you know, does a great job of promoting our program. Brad Wells, Brad, I would like you to hold your hand up wherever you're at. Where's Brad at? There's one guy in this place that knows how to do a little of everything, and that's Brad Wells. He can do it all. Thank you, Brad. Uh, and all your helpers. Lacey Anderson, I know, again, uh, this is phenomenal, and I'm kind of like Dr. Scott. This looks like a, a great place just to have a banquet every year. So uh, very appreciative, Lacey, of all the work you've done. Natalie Cohen, thanks for being patient with me and our coaching staff because we – uh, continue to ask her questions all the time and and there's always transfer questions and those kind of things and and does a great job with our compliance Kim Little does a great job for us Phil Carr and your training staff thank you Phil and uh, Dr. Safuda and Todd appreciate everything you've done for us and uh, Emily Moses parade coordinator appreciate everything that you did today um, I'd also like to thank Eric Connect Eddie Lomshek uh, you know, for the, the coaches show and the radio show and all the sponsors that uh, you have for that. I uh, feel like uh, you make it very easy for me to be a big part of that. So give all those folks a round of applause, please. I would like all of our football coaches and families uh, to please stand up. All coaches and families to please stand up. If you don't, I'm going to start introducing you individually. So get your tail ends up, okay? Now, before you before you clap, I got to say a couple things. I'd like to introduce everybody individually, but uh, my son Derek said you got to hurry up because we're ready to see the highlight video. So, the bottom line is, uh, we are very blessed here in Pittsburgh. I believe we have the best coaching staff in the nation. And I want to tell you that our families, uh, everybody wants to be a football coach. But uh, there's not too many people that want to be a football coach at 10 or 11 or noon o'clock noon on Sunday and then till 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And I appreciate all you families so much for, for being patient, being supportive, and uh, got a great group of guys that are great coaches and great friends of mine. And thank you for all your families and thanks, thanks for all your help. So let's give them a round of applause. I'd like to say a special thanks. When, we, when, we, uh, when our coaching staff took the job, there was a lot of people that felt like, felt like we needed to do something different in our strength and conditioning program. And uh, John Johnson and Neil Philpott kind of put their heads together. And, uh, you know, I've got a lot of comments from coaches in the conference this year about, man, you have a lot of the same guys you had last year, but, man, they look different. Well, yeah, they're a year older, they're a year stronger, they're a year tougher. And uh, I just want to give a special thanks to John Johnson and Neil Philpott uh, for doing all of our strength and conditioning. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to thank our players. 
I tell you what, we could, I could talk uh, for a long time about our players, but you're right, everybody wants to get to the highlight video. But thanks for listening to our coaches. Um, thanks for sticking to the plan. Uh, thanks for working hard every day and becoming great student athletes. I'm very appreciative of, of you players believing in what we're doing. And uh, we talked about it all year, one game at a time, one play at a time, and you guys really bought into that. So thank you very much, football players. I would like to thank the players' parents. You know, I know a lot of people are happy that we're able to win a national championship. I tell you what, it just does my heart good and makes me feel good for all, all of our players' parents because, number one, you've trusted our coaching staff. You've trusted us to, to take your son for four or five years. Um, you know, hopefully we've made a, a, a positive influence on their life. But uh, I know how stressful it can be as a parent being up in the stands. And so once again, I know that there's parents here that have senior sons that they're saying, you know, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? Well, what you do now is be a, continue to be a part of Gorilla Nation and can you continue to come back and support the Gorillas. So thank you all, players, parents. Thank you. Once again, I don't, we don't have time probably to uh, get all of our seniors up here, but senior players, I tell you what, our leadership from our seniors was second to none. And, uh, you know, in, in Division II, we're very restricted on what we can do in the summertime. We count on our seniors and our captains to, to do a tremendous job with our players in the summer. And uh, our seniors really bought into that. We talked after the spring meeting last year. We talked to all the seniors about, let's, let's make sure that we have no regrets. Let's make sure that we do everything possible. The only thing we have common with our opponents is time. And so how we take advantage of our time between now and then is extremely important. And our seniors did, did just that. They took advantage of their time. They didn't take days off. They worked extremely hard. They did a great job of leading our football players. And so the 2011 seniors, you guys, you, you did make memories and, you, and we're gonna remember you forever. So thank you very much to our seniors. I'd also like to thank all the former lettermen, all the former players at Pittsburgh State, and all the former coaches, because just think about this. There, Coach Garman and I have talked about this several times. There's so many great coaches out there. There's been so many great players that have played for Pittsburgh State that never have that have had that opportunity to win a championship. And, uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough to been, win a conference championship and a national championship, and we're very blessed. So I'd like to thank all of our former lettermen and coaches that, that have played here and coached here at Pittsburgh State. And lastly, I'd like to thank uh, the rest of you and every, all the fans here at Pittsburgh State. And as, if, as Jim elated to, uh, the, the, boy, the, the crowd at Delta State, that was just phenomenal. That's a memory that anybody that was there will remember. But uh, I want to thank all you fans and anybody else that makes up Gorilla Nation. So give yourselves a round of applause. Okay, our, uh, our coaching staff put together, uh, where's Stacy? Stacy, I'm going to take a little bit of your thunder here, okay? So I'm going to give away one of the awards that you're supposed to give away, but that's okay. Um, our coaching staff put together a new award this year, okay? It's called the Heart of a Gorilla Award, okay? And that was uh, named by Coach Pierce. This is created by the PSU coaching staff to honor a player who best exemplifies the hard work and dedication needed to succeed in the classroom and on the playing field. A player who displays the heart of a gorilla. And this year's winner, the initial winner, the first time ever of this award, is Derek Jackson. Come on up. Derek just completed his fifth season at the Pitt State program, a uh, Native American's Kansas. Uh, he has been a guy that he comes to practice with a smile on his face every single day. He didn't get to play a ton in games, but uh, he's a multi-year member of the MIAA academic honor roll during his career uh, for the Gorillas. He's graduated with a 3.55 GPA in construction management. What an awesome kid and so thankful that he's a Gorilla.
You know, back in the uh, weekend of champions, it was the Emporia State game. We had the 61 national championship team, 81 uh, runner-up team, 91 national championship team here. And uh, we, after practice one day, we had a, a lot of the members of the 61 team uh, were there. And, uh, you know, I had several of them kind of pull me to the side. It wasn't like they told me by a group, but I had several of them tell me that, man, I tell you what, we would just like to go to Florence. We would just like to play in the national championship one more time. And so I'm so happy for those. And you talk about a powerful statement. And, uh, you know, our, our coaching staff, I shared that with them, and, the, and they were, we were all very aware of that. But, uh, boy, the, the things that our, our people that put – uh, promoted our games throughout the year, the camouflage jersey, the weekend of champions, and boy, it's just something that we have every week, and it's just awesome. It's always it's always fun to look forward to the next thing that we're going to do, and and uh, that that really sticks out in my mind this year. You know, there's a lot of people that talked about the season. There's everybody wants to know well, how did we go from five and six, and then being fortunate enough to be in a bowl game and go six and six last year. Uh, what was the turning point? Um, how did we do it? You know what. Was it because our strength and conditioning was better? Was it because we did this different? Was it because we did that different? What was the turning point in the game? Was it the, did you know we're pretty good when we, got, when we walked off the field at Missouri Western? I think a lot of people felt pretty good at the Missouri Western game. Did you know that your team would have the ability to come back after we drive the ball at the end of the, end of the, end of the game at Truman State to win on, on the road against a team that we should have maybe beat by three or four touchdowns? Uh, was it was it the Northwest Missouri game where we were down 22 points at halftime and we were able to come back from that game and win? You know, just what was it? Well, I mean, what was what was the key to everything? And uh, you know, how about the how about the win at Central Missouri? And then people say, you know, I don't I hate to hear this, but people say, you know, well that loss against Wolfsburg that was probably a good thing for us. Our coaching staff don't think a loss is ever good for us. Okay. But uh, you know the bottom line is the answer is yes to all those things. It was a culmination of everything. It was a culmination of all the things that, that you as fans bring to the, bring to the table for us. It's a, it, was, it was everything combined. And, and we've, we've had a little bit of time to reflect on this, not a lot of time. But the bottom line is this. We had a group of players and coaches <clears throat> that believed they could win every Saturday. They really believed that. And we talked about one game at a time and one play at a time. And, and Zach Dickey walked in my office about halfway through the season because we always talk about the 2004 team, how awesome they were. And he says, are we kind of getting close to that? Because I feel really good about what we're doing. And you know what? We've done that. And we were able to win a national championship. And again, it's because uh, we stuck to the plan and everybody uh, believed in what we're going to do. And we we're going to go out. And we had a lot of, a lot of resiliency. Uh, a lot of toughness. Uh, you can continue to say all the different uh, adjectives that, that describe this team, but the bottom line is they believe they could win every Saturday. And so, uh, what a, what a fun ride and fun job! Again, thank you so much for our coaches and players for for the season. Now, the 2012 season, the 2012 team will be different. Every team is different. Okay. But the goals will not change. We're going, to, we're going to prepare one game at a time. We're going to talk about playing one play at a time. We're going to talk about winning every play. But Pittsburgh State University has won more games than any other Division II school in the nation. We've won 30 conference championships. We've won numerous bowl games. We've, won, we've had, been in countless playoff appearances. We've won four national championships. But there's one milestone that this program has not yet accomplished. Join myself, our coaches, and our players September 1 in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, as we attack our next challenge. Thank you very much. As we continue with the program, here to present academic awards is Mrs. Natalie Cullen. Natalie currently serves as an Associate Athletic Director and Senior Woman Administrator at Pittsburgh State. 
She oversees a comprehensive academic enhancement program for PSU student athletes and coordinates NCAA and MIAA compliance and eligibility certification. The goals of a championship football program are clear to recruit and develop young men into championship student athletes. The 2011 Gorillas are not only national champions on the football field, but also in the classroom. 50 student athletes have achieved a cumul cumulative grade point average of 3.0 or better. It is my pleasure to introduce them. Please stand as I call your name and remain standing. And also, if you could hold your applause until the end, we've got quite a list to go through here. Avery Adair, Callan Archer, Eric Brantley, Tank Burns, are you standing? Jake Catloth, Connor Combs, Taylor Counts, Trey Derryberry, Tyler Disney, Mandel Dixon, Nate Dryling, Billy Avey, Derek Fisher, Louis Fouts, Trace Goad, Chase Gogol, Colby Hall, Chris Hans, Chris Heffern, Derek Jackson, Trent Keenan, Aaron Kolich, Levi Kunch, Austin Leak, Brady Letchworth, Eric Love, Gavin Lutman, Gage McGinnis, Shay Miller, Trey Myers, Mike Noble, Corey Phillips, Brian Poston, Daniel Rank, Jacob Rimble, Chance Riley, Hal Rivard, Scott Roderick, Reed Schatzman, Dalton Schoonover, Dallas Shells, Chaz Smith, Justin Strong, Kyle Swartz, Dino Teague, John Thomas, Grant Towery, Deron Washington, Briggs Westby, and Joe Winshuffle. Let's give them a, give them a round of applause. In addition to the nine student athletes who earned Dean Semester Honors, we also can boast that we had six student athletes who earned a perfect 4.0 All-A Academic Honors during the fall semester. Once again, as I call your name, please remain, remain standing and hold your applause until the end. Louis Fouts, Trent Keenan, Scott Roderick, Dalton Schoonover, Grant Towery, and Jerome Washington. Congratulations. Not only do the gorillas succeed within our own university community, but they also succeed on the national level. I am very pleased to congratulate Chaz Smith, if you'd please stand, on earning the Capital One Academic All District Second Team Honors. And please remain standing. <laughs> Joining Chaz, Eric Love, please stand. We'd like to congratulate you for making Capital One Academic All-American Honors second team. Congratulations. <laughs> you guys can sit down. Um, as those of you who are at Florence, um, you know that we have um, in our, I guess as a guest here tonight, Mr. Eric Love. Please stand again. Um, Eric earned the NCAA Elite 89 Award, which is announced at the Division II football um, game on Saturday in Florence, Alabama. And he earned that by having the highest cumulative grade point average of all the individuals who are playing at the championship game, so between Pitt State and our um, opponents. Eric has a 3.67 GPA as a construction engineering technology major. So congratulations, Eric. And finally, it is time to
honored to present the Sunflower Award. This is presented annually to the student, the um, graduate, sorry, graduating senior with the highest cumulative grade point average. Eric Love, come on down because you, with your 3.67 GPA, have earned the Sunflower Award. Once again, I'd like to express my congratulations to these football players who are fantastic, not only on the football field, but also in the classroom as well. You make my job relatively easy, so I do appreciate that. I'd like to thank the coaching staff for recruiting fantastic student athletes who work very hard, not only on the field, but also in the classroom as well. And obviously, our student athletes are champions in every sense of the word, and we are so very proud of you. Thank you very much for this season. It's just been fantastic, and we look forward to next year. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to welcome to the podium one of the Pitt State Gorillas all-time greats. John Lever is a member of the Gorillas 1957 NAIA National Championship football squad. He was a three-year letterman for legendary coach Carney Smith. Following graduation, John enjoyed a four-decade coaching career, including a decorated career as an assistant coach in the National Football League. He was inducted into the PSU Athletics Hall of Fame in 2000. A good friend to us all, please welcome Mr. John Lever. Thank you, Dan. You're very kind. Listen, uh, I hope all of you love this as much as I do. I've been going to athletic banquets all my life, and I don't think they're ever too long. <laughs> really. We have so much to celebrate. Take your watches off. Don't look at them. Let's enjoy the evening because I think it's wonderful. I don't need to say congratulations. The coaches and players know what I think. They did a fantastic job. Our team was picked fifth or sixth in the MIAA and we won the national championship. Nobody ever wins a national championship unless they were picked to win it prior to the season. So what they did was truly outstanding and I congratulate you on it. The remarks I want to make tonight though, because of our coaching staff, the way they conduct practice, the way they handle the players off the field and on the field, the way they handle themselves, the type of people they are, I would say the same things and I told them this Wednesday to a group of recruits, I would say the same thing if they were 0-11 because we truly have, and Tim and his staff, and our players, a truly great group of outstanding men and young men, and you're all to be congratulated for the way you do that. Besides, they can play football, which is really good. But anyway, uh, I'll hurry on. Uh, one thing I want to mention, you know, we've had, uh, this is the fourth national championship in football for our university, and I was a third team substitute on the first one in 57. We also had one in 61 and 91, and now this year, there's some members here from the 57 team, the 61 team, and the 91 team. Please stand, let's give them a round of applause, because they weren't bad. Thank you very much. The parents have been thanked, so I want to say seniors, we all wish you the very best of luck when you leave the university. Parents, we thank you for sending them to us. And underclassmen, this is so much fun. Let's do it again. Okay, Dan, we ready? The first awards that we're going to make are for the all MIAA football team, and I'm gonna to have to read these. These are the honorable mention players. We'd like for each of you to come forward, hold your applause until we finish. J.R. Jones, defensive lineman from Norcross, Georgia. J.R. started 13 games, recorded 31 tackles, five and a half tackles for loss, and two and a half quarterback sacks. J.R., great job. I go to the next one? Okay, you all know who JR is, okay. <laughs> Chase McCoy. Chase is our place kicker. He's a senior from Blue Springs, Missouri. Converted a school record of 18 of 21 field goal attempts, as well as 65 of 68 PAT tries on the season. Where's Chase? Great job, Chase. Kicking is so hard. So much pressure, that's wonderful. Okay, Nick Pugh, offensive lineman, junior. JR and Chase are seniors. Nick is a junior. He's from Nowata. He started all 14 games at tackle, helped the Gorillas average 448 
and a half yards of total offense per game. That's great offense. Nick? Okay. Chaz Smith, defensive back. You all know where he's from. We're real proud of you, Chaz. He started six games, had a season-ending injury, recording 30 tackles and four interceptions in the first six games. That's almost one a game. That's outstanding. Great job, Chaz. John Thomas. Chaz is a junior. John is a senior. John, you've had a great career, and we all congratulate you on what you've done for the university. He's from Raytown. He started 7 of 14 games, catching 37 passes, 551 yards, and three touchdowns. Good job, John. And Bryston Wilson, a running back. He's a junior from Tallahassee, Florida. Started 13 games, rushing for 857 yards and seven touchdowns. Good job, Bryston. This is the group that made all MIAA honor mention. Let's give him a hand. Thank you. Bryson, I'll tell you what, man, the scholarships have gotten better. That's a good looking outfit. <laughs> I like that. Now, second team, all MIAA players. The first gentleman is the exciting, electrifying John Brown from Homestead, Florida. John started 12 games, caught 61 passes, 1,216 yards. I don't know what kind of average is that, 20 yards a catch at least. 12 touchdowns and rushed for three more. Where's John? John, a great job. He's a sophomore, how about that? That's even better. This, this, I'm sorry to say this. This is the second team. That guy's phenomenal. And now how about Zach Dickey, second team? You all know Zach. Zach, where is Zach? Zach, I congratulate you. I want to say this about Zach. I think he's the most improved football player that I've ever seen at this university. He was phenomenal. Anyway, Zach started every game, rushed for 1,165 yards, 10 touchdowns, passed for 2,290 yards, and had 17 scores. Zach, great job, man. Okay, Zach's a senior. Cody Holland, sophomore from the Osho. Is Cody here or is he in a track meet? Where is Cody? All right, Cody. Cody's also <clears throat> Helping our track team, he's a, he's a uh, sophomore from Yosho, started every game at tackle. He helped PSU allow the third lowest sack total in Division II in 2011. Where's Coach Wells? Where's Steve? How many sacks we give up, Steve? Ten. You're going to catch Kronike's record. He had six one year, which I thought was phenomenal. Ten is really phenomenal. Great job. Cody, we're glad you'll be back. Kelly, is it Kel Small or Kelly Smalley? Kel. Kel Smalley, I'm sorry. A senior from Tulsa, an offensive lineman, started every game at guard. He helped PSU rank sixth nationally in scoring and seventh nationally in rushing. It's amazing how Dan can come up with something different for every great player, Dan. It's a good job. Luke Springer, linebacker, senior from Topeka. Started 12 games, recorded 71 tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, Seven pass breakups despite missing two games with injury. Luke has had a great career here as a senior. We're going to miss him. Spencer Worthington, defensive end. He's a senior from Castle, Iowa. Spencer started all 14 games, recorded 50 tackles with 14 tackles for loss, nine quarterback sacks. That's a lot of sacks, believe me. Great job, Spencer. That is the second team. Let's give him a hand. Now the first team. Stay up here, John. Where'd, you go? Where'd John Brown? There he is. As a return specialist, they did give him first team honors. Wasn't that nice of him? Okay. <laughs> He ranked second in the MIAA in punt returns and kickoff returns while leading the MIAA in all-purpose yards. John was the second team player. Nate Dryling, a first team, I'm sorry. Nate Dryling, linebacker. He's a sophomore from Hutchison. Started all 14 games. And if you haven't read his stats, listen to this. 139 tackles, 17 tackles for loss, seven interceptions, six pass breakups, outstanding linebacker play by an individual. Nate and John are both sophomores, isn't that wonderful? 
Just give him a hand. One more award for the MIAA. Naturally, all of you could have voted. You'd have voted exactly the same as they did. The MIAA Defensive Player of the Year, Nate Drowdy. Congratulations, Nate. Okay, now we go to the Conference Player of the Week honorees. John Brown, Special Teams, September the 1st, Missouri Western. Offense, October the 1st against Northwest Missouri. Offense, November the 12th versus Missouri Southern. So John's back up here. Nate Drowley, Defense, September 17th versus Truman. Defense, October the 1st versus Northwest Missouri. And Defense, October 22nd versus Central Missouri. Gus Toka, Gus is a junior, September the 1st versus Missouri Western. John Thomas, special teams, September 17th versus Truman. Spencer Worthington, defense, September 24th versus William Jewell. Jake Craig, special teams, October the 15th versus Lincoln. These are the conference player, players of the week that our guerrilla squad earned. Let's give them a hand. Elijah Olbo, where is he? Come on up, Elijah. And Gus Toke is already here. I apologize. We missed you as first team all conference players. Elijah, I had the good pleasure of working with your high school coach two weeks ago in Florida. I know why you can play good. Thank you very much. Let's give it a okay, are all are we correct now? All super regional four honorees. All super region four honorees. Here we go. Cody Holland, third team offensive tackle from the Don Hansen team. Cody, you want to come back up? Also, Eric Love, third team fullback. Eric. Luke Stringer, third team linebacker. Luke. John Brown, second team wide receiver. Man. Zach Dickey, second team. That's all right. Who the hell is first team? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, Chase McCoy, second team place kicker. Chase? I'll get this right this time. Kel Smalley. Kel? Kel is second team, offensive guard. Spencer Worthington, second team, defensive end. John Brown. First team, return specialist. Nate Dryley, first team, linebacker. Elijah Olabode, first team, cornerback. Gus Toka, first team, defensive end. That's a group, let's give them a round of applause.
Now the All-American honorees, Zach Dickey, honorable mention, quarterback. All-American, let's give him a hand. Anyway. Chase McCoy, honorable mention, place kicker. Kel Smalley, honorable mention, offensive guard. Spencer, <coughs> Spencer Worthington, honorable mention, defensive end. Spencer. <laughs> Gus Toka, 13, defensive end. Gus. John Brown, honorable mention wide receiver, second team return specialist, second team all-purpose back. Let me go back a little further. The second team return specialist from Daytronics and Don Hanson football team, and the second team all-purpose back, AP Little All-American. Good job, John. <laughs> Nate Grilling. Nate was first team linebacker, American Football Coaches Association, which is really good. First team, AP Little All-American team. First team, Daytronics All-American team. First team, Don Hansen team. And Defensive Player of the Year in Division II football Don Hanson team. Good job, Nate. <laughs> Elijah, where's Elijah? Otoboti, first team, All-American. or what? Tim, we want to do it again next year, so carry on. Our next speaker enjoyed a successful career as a running back for the Gorillas in the late 1990s and early 2000s. A native of Topeka, Kansas, Stacy Butcher helped Pitt State win 35 football games during his Pitt State career and make three trips to the NCAA Division II playoffs. Please welcome Mr. Stacy Butcher. Special night tonight, guys. Special night tonight. We'll get back to that. I would like to first congratulate you young men on a job well done. Go ahead and come. Give yourselves a hand of applause. At the beginning of the season, I've had an opportunity to speak with the players, me, TC, and a couple other uh, well-known players here. Um, when we talked about your obligations to this program, not only to this program, but um, your obligations to this community, as well as Southeast Kansas. And I'd like to thank you for stepping up to the challenge and representing yourselves as champions on and off the field. Um, your, uh, <clears throat> your contributions to the YMCA's, the local elementary schools. I like to give you guys a round of applause because um, the little boys around here, they really, really look up to you guys, my sons included, um, Jerick and LJ over here um, every day. We get the opportunity to watch every uh, Pitt State home game and we don't get to leave the field until Zach Dickey comes out and says, what's up to LJ? So thank you guys for, <laughs> thank you guys for all you do and making me, uh, making a happy home in my house. So thank you. Um, <laughs> January 1996, 1996 was my first visit to Pittsburgh State University. Um, coaches came to my house and they told me about this place I've never heard of or never been to. And they told me this was a special place, a special place where you can raise your family and uh, make, a, make a, a happy life for yourself. And uh, well, I'm from Topeka and I didn't know anything about that. I'm from the city. And so for our first trip down here, we took this 
three hour and a half trip, and I was like, really? I don't, I don't, I don't see a whole lot going on down here. <laughs> but um, I was invited to this banquet as well, and so I was one of the students, or student athletes sitting out in the crowd, wondering where I was gonna play my next four years of college football at. And after the um, ceremony, I knew that I was gonna be a Pitt State Gorilla, and um, <clears throat> it was the best decision I've ever made. Shelly and I chose to raise our sons here and be a part of this guerrilla nation where <clears throat> guerrilla football is life and life is good down here. Um, so with that said, we're going to go down to these awards. <clears throat> work team, Offensive Player of the Year. This award is presented to the offensive, most valuable offensive work team player. This year's recipient, recipient Trey Derryberry. Please come up, Trey. Trey Derryberry is in his third year at Pittsburgh State. He's from Carthage, Missouri. This is his second, this is his third year, two years playing receiver. Um, he started off as a quarterback. He was also a two-time All-State performer at Carthage, Missouri High School. Everybody give Trey a round of applause. Next, work team defensive player of the year. Work team, this award is presented to the uh, most valuable work team defensive player. Uh, this year's recipient is Louis Fouts. Louis Fouts, please come up. <laughs> Louis Fouts is not here with us, um, but I'll tell you a little bit about Louis. Um, this is Louis's first year in the Pittsburgh State um, program. He's from. Uh, from Blue Springs, Kansas, or from Blue Springs High School, uh, Lewis Fouts was a red shirt linebacker here for the Gorillas. He was the first team All-State performer for Blue Springs High School. Lewis Fouts. <clears throat> the next award is going to be the Ronnie West Award. This award is presented to the most valuable special teams player. Um, this award is named in honor of former PSU wide receiver and Harlan Hill winner Ronnie West. This year's recipient, John Brown. John Brown is walking shoes today. Uh, John Brown completed his first year for Pittsburgh State, a homestead Florida native. He made an immediate impact for the Gorillas on his first time he touched the ball. He returned it for an 84-yard touchdown. <clears throat> John Brown. Uh, John Brown also ended the season amongst the best in punt and kickoff returns in the nation. Brown averaged um, 25.7 yards on the kickoff and 13.7 yards on the um, punt return with three offensive, with three special team scores. Good job, John. This last award for me is a Ronald Moore Award. This award is presented to the most outstanding freshman. This award is, in, uh, this award is named in honor of former running back um, Division II Hall of Famer and Hall of Hill winner, Ronald Moore. This year's recipient, Mandel Dixon. And it looks good. Mandel Nixon saw action in 13 games as a true freshman at tight end this year. This Red Oak, Texas native also was a key member on the Pittsburgh State goal line and short yardage um, packages. He carried the ball eight times for seven yards and five touchdowns. Mandel Nixon. Thank you. Our next, next speaker is one of the most successful quarterbacks in Pitt State history. Brian Hutchins posted a 27-5 and record as a three-year starter for the Gorillas. He led Pitt State to the 1991 National Championship and 25 consecutive victories between his sophomore and junior seasons. Hutchins was an All-America selection as a junior in 1992. Please welcome Mr. Brian Hutchins. Good evening. Woo! I'm still upset we didn't uh, win back to back in 91 and 92. Um, what a great evening. I'm so proud of this team. This has been a phenomenal year. Uh, we've gotten to know quite a few of the players and it's time to embarrass a few of them. Uh, I need the following people to stand please. Joe Uzzle, J.R. Jones, Paul Robinson, Luke Stringer, 
you are the nominees for the 2011 Best Hair. <laughs> and the winner goes to J.R. Jones. J.R., my dad had the uh, final vote. You were by far his favorite player. He came every Saturday to watch you. Congratulations on a great season. Um, I want to tell a quick story that is 100% true, and you already, there's an award named after him, Ronnie West, who's a very dear friend of mine. Matter of fact, we still talk at least once a week, 20 years later. Uh, back in 1991, Ronnie and I hung out a lot, and we used to try to get out, and we'd try to find the backyard football games or go shoot some hoops with some local kids. And one day after practice, and this is a true story, he said, uh, Brian, will you come talk to some Boy Scouts with me? I said, absolutely. So he came by my house. I lived with some guys, and Ronnie used to drive this 1975 Cougar. It was missing the front seat. And so when I got in, it was like a limousine. So he was sitting here and I was sitting here. But uh, anyways, so he came to pick me up and uh, I had a t-shirt on or something. He said, well, why don't you put on a little nicer shirt? I still didn't think anything of it. I put on a nicer shirt, we get in, and he's pretty quiet. Well, we pull into a local church here, one of the larger churches, and the parking lot is full of cars. And I see families getting out and uh, kids getting out, Boy Scouts. And so I'm starting to get a little suspicious. Uh, we walk into the side door and there's a room just like this full of tables and up at the front there's a line of tables and a guy came up to us and handed us the itinerary and he said, I really appreciate you guys coming. And I looked at the front and said, guest speakers, Brian Hutchins and Ronnie West. <laughs> and at that point in time, he said, sir, I'm sorry, I'm coming down with a cold, Brian's going to have to speak. <laughs> and I looked at him and he kind of gave me a grin and so I had to get up and talk in front of not quite this many, but when you're 19 years old, it seemed like three million people. So um, Ronnie and I have remained great friends. It was, a, it was a, a nice tribute earlier this year after the Northwest game uh, to uh, uh, go to Wichita with him to see him inducted to the Kansas Hall of Fame. It was very nice. Um, before I forget, it's been 20 years, but I'm still under contractual obligation to recognize my lineman from 1991. Um, <laughs> center Doug Bullard, Kendall Gammon, Mike Brockle, Jeff Mudhank, Andy Kissinger, and I'm going to go ahead and include our tight ends, Brian Pinamani and Paul Sparkman, because they were tight ends, tackles. We didn't really throw the ball back much then, Zach. Uh, I think it was a rule it had to be third and eight before we threw a ball, and we only had one receiver in route. So um, I want to recognize those guys. I also want to rec recognize my uh, beautiful wife, Stacy, of almost 17 years. Uh, not only is she beautiful, she's a fantastic cook. As many of the players that have been over to the house can attest to that, the O-line, I've never seen anybody eat food like that in my life. Um, so Stacy, thank you. Uh, one of my sons is here tonight, Cooper, who is in eighth grade. Uh, funny story this year about Cooper. Um, after the Central game, we were on the way home and to pass the time, we were, uh, I would call out a jersey number, and then they would say who the player was. And surprisingly, they knew a lot of the players. So I threw out the number 46. What does Cooper say? That's old man Spencer Worthington. <laughs> that was his exact words. I'm not exaggerating. And he said, Dad, how old is he? I said, I am not for sure, but I think, in, I think when I was a senior, he was a red for, redshirt freshman. <laughs> uh, Spencer, you had that one coming. Uh, you are a doctor, right? Okay. Um, my other son had a big decision to make. He had a basketball game, so it was either banquet or basketball game, and he chose to be with his friends competing right now uh, over in Frontenac, so he couldn't make it. But I want to tell you a quick story about him. After our youth football season this year, he's the diehard football player in our family, more diehard than I ever was. He said, uh, Dad, I've made a decision. I said, what? He said, I've narrowed it down. I said, you've narrowed what down? He said, I've narrowed it down where I'm going to play football in college. I said, you have, huh? And, and I said, where? And he said, uh, Oklahoma, Minnesota, or Pittsburgh State University. <laughs> I said, okay. So, Coach Beck, you, still, you have a chance right now. Um, he's a few years down the road. But, you know, if you play your cards right, I'll put in a good word. Um, but, you know, in talking about Pittsburgh State, I'm obviously very passionate about this place. Uh, I've got a lot of fond memories and uh, made a lot of good friends, and I'm happy to make this my home today. Uh, I work for a company here in town, Miller's Professional Imaging. Been there 16 years, and you know we have a motto. We, we're the best photo lab in the United States, but each and every day we go uh, in business, there's no staying the same. You either get better or you get worse. There's no staying the same. 
So what I would like to do, seniors, you're off into the sunset. Your last game is a national championship. Unbelievable. You're going to carry that for the rest of your life. Underclassmen, anybody thinking about coming here, red shirts, whoever, now's the time when you have to make a decision what it's going to be next year. As Coach Beck mentioned and probably said it a lot better than I have, it's a whole completely different team next year. What you fail to do or what you do will all occur in, in what happens in this off season and um, you know how you work together in the classroom, the weight room, the film room, and uh, the off the field things in the, in the locker room. Um, so as I get to um, our first award here, you know I think that's one of the uh, things that this team was very special with this year. And I think it was the off the field things that I really uh, noticed. And so this first award, get this microphone out of my way, is the Richard Stratton Award. Um, this is given annually by vote of team members to a player showing the most sportsmanship, loyalty, inspiration, in honor of Richard Stratton who was killed serving his country in active military service in 1952. This was a very close-knit team. I know a lot of you in the community uh, have dealt with this person and uh, he is truly um, the epitome of sportsmanship, loyalty, and inspiration, Zach Dickey. Zach emerged as an on and off the field leader for Pitt State football team, voted a team captain last spring. Dickey led a Pitt State offense at the end of the season, averaging 40.2 points and 448.5 total yards per game. He accounted for 27 touchdowns, passing for 17 and running for 10 more. The Gorillas ranked sixth annually, or sixth nationally in scoring and seventh nationally in rushing, averaging 258 yards per game. Congratulations, Zach. I have to say I'm a pretty big Zach Dickey fan. Um, obviously, we, we share a very special bond being from Pittsburgh and being able to play for the uh, um, Pitt State Gorillas. His grandparents are my next door neighbors. His younger brothers played on my baseball team for five years. His two sisters babysitted my boys during the summer. Um, his dad and I are both bowling. His dad's much faster than I am. Um, so, Okay, before I get to the next award, a couple of interesting notes that I learned. Uh, this year. I know there's a few of you nervous in your chairs over there. Um, John White hates to fly, but he loves cats. He has like three to five cats, defensive linemen for Pitt State. Ty Henry was a chess champion. Ty, congratulations. <laughs> Nick Pugh, if we had a beard contest, you would certainly win. And I think you have employment when you're about 65 years old at any local mall in the country. <laughs> Okay. This next award is the Joe Murphy Award, presented to the most valuable defensive player. This award is named in honor of PSU offensive line coach Joe Murphy. This player has, has had an outstanding career so far, and we're fortunate to have him two more years. Nate Dryling, please come forward. Nate Dryling showed himself to be one of the premier defensive players in Division II again during the sophomore campaign. The Hutchinson, Kansas native made a team leading 139 tackles with 17 stops behind the line of scrimmage. He also recorded seven interceptions and six pass breakups. Dryling was voted the MIAA Player of the Year, and the Don Hanson Football Committee selected him as National Defensive Player of the Year. He became a consensus first team All-America and garnering accolades from Dactronics, the American Football Coaches Association, as the Associated Press Little American Team, All American Team, which includes NCAA Division II and Div Division III, as well as NAIA. Your dad's going to have to build a wing on the side of the house for all your awards. Okay. Um, the next award. This award is the W.G. Parrott Award, presented to the most valuable offensive player. This award is named in honor of the Pittsburgh businessman and longtime PSU supporter, W.G. Parrott. I'll never forget uh, meeting this individual. Uh, I came to one of the first practices when the season started, and uh, I had the first coach came up to me and said, remember the name, John Brown. Come up, John. I walked up to the next coach, and they said, John Brown will be a two touchdown a game difference maker. I'm scratching my head. And the next coach said, the MIAA is not ready for his speed. The next coach said he could potentially be one of the best players to ever put on a Pitt State uniform. It's a pretty high compliment before he plays his first game. 
by the time with the first game came around, I'm sitting around a, a group of people when he's getting ready to catch the first punt return. And I said, I will bet any of you he runs this back. What does he do? He runs it back. Congratulations, John. Let me read this. John, John enjoyed one of the most pr productive receiving seasons in school history and proved himself as one of the country's most prolific purpose, purpose backs of accumulating yards on the ground and on returns. Brown caught 61 passes for 1,216 yards and 12 touchdowns, ranking second all-time in history in the single season receptions. John, I have to tell you, I bragged a lot about you to my good friend Ronnie West. and It was almost like a jealous girlfriend. He was so tired of me talking about him. But he told me to give you a special message that uh, he wants you to shatter the records next year. Um, John was the fourth highest total in school history and had 92 rushing yards and three touchdowns, scoring 110 points on the season. Brown earned second team MIAA honors as wide receiver. He additionally earned second team All-American accolades as an all-purpose back. He also earned All-American recognition as both a return specialist and a wide receiver on the Don Hanson Football Committee. Congratulations. The last award is the Carney Smith Award. The Carney Smith Award is presented to the most outstanding player of the season. Zach Dickey, please come forward. <laughs> Zach Dickey enjoyed one of the, the most post-productive seasons in school history, showcasing his skills as a dual threat qu at quarterback. The Pittsburgh native completed 149 of 248 passes for 2,290 yards and 17 touchdowns through the air, and he carried the ball a team leading 210 times for 1,165 yards and 10 scores. He joined the elite of the list of quarterbacks to run and pass for over 1,000 yards in the season. His 3,455 3, yards of total offense ranks 10th all-time in MIAA history. Dickey was voted second team MIAA by the conference coaches, and he garnered honor, honorable mention All-American honors from Don Hanson Football Committee. Zach, congratulations. We're very proud of you. Thank you.